Morning, Sam. Morning. A bit late this morning. Aye. Lucky to be here at all. I'll say. What happened? Patrol nearly got us. Okay, Lefty. Ah, oh, skip it. I was going to bring you up a cup of tea. That's all right, Elsie. There's an awful lot to do. It's just the place is filthy. Oh, we'll get it into shape all right. I hope so. Well, McGregor wasn't very particular, was he? He was a dirty old stone, so if you ask me. Elsie? Yes? Be careful who you talk to. Yes, of course. Oh, don't worry. You're as safe as houses in this place. Are you worried? A little. Safe as houses is rather an out-of-date expression, isn't it? Yes, I suppose it is. Nothing sacred these days. I've put the stove on. All right. I'll get the breakfast. <laughs> nice big kitchen, isn't it? Not there. Oh, can't wait to get my hands on that stove. Shouldn't think it's been touched. Lefty. Come on, then. Don't be all day. Hi, Skipper. Oh, Gregor expecting this lot, Skipper. No, haven't seen the old boy for a week. <laughs> well, of all the cheek. But who is it? I don't know. Didn't McGregor give you the key? No. I'll just go and see if it... The I'll start the tea. Start the blooming tea? Did you hear that? Well, who are you? I happen to be the owner of this place. I took it over yesterday. I'm sorry I didn't give you any warning. Is McGregor gone? Yes, he has. A bit sudden, wasn't it? My name's Duncan McLeod. You're Miss... Uh... Miss Foster. Yes, I see I owe you an explanation. You see, the fact is that... Uh, Skipper, that's my lot, as far as smuggling goes. Oh, Lefty, this is Miss Foster. And Miss, uh... Tripp's the name, Elsie Tripp. Very nice, too. What's happened? This lady happens to be the new owner. Your predecessor gave us permission to store a few, uh, items in the yard. Will you excuse me, please? You see, we were under the impression that the pub... You needn't bother to explain. Take that stuff away as fast as you can. Oh, but wait if a minute. If you don't, I shall inform the police that you're using the interstore contraband liquor. Isn't that what it is? That roughly describes it. But it won't take it all at once. Then you'd better bring something that will. I'll give you until lunchtime. Oh, thank you. You'll be caught a Patterson for that lot. That's your problem. Gregor might have told us he was pulling out. He must have got the wind up. Allow me. It's a neck. Thank you. Aye, aye. Morning, Jane. Lovely morning.
Good morning, Mr. McLeod. Did I mention my other name was Duncan? I believe you did. I don't remember mentioning that mine was Jane. Obviously, never sight. I'm glad to see you do something else besides smuggling. Oh, yes. Why do you smuggle? It keeps me out of mischief. I'm afraid you take rather a poor view of me, don't you? Possibly. It's quite a normal view to take of people who break laws. I mean, willfully break them. Trying to tell me you've never broken one yourself? What do you mean by that? Well, we all do from time to time, don't we? Some more than others. You know, extra rations, dodging income tax and so forth. Quite human little failings, really. Does smuggling liquor across the channel come under the category of a human little failing? Oh, definitely. If you ever get caught, I hope the customs authorities take the same view. Thank you. Didn't think you cared that much. I don't. If you want the truth, Mr. McLeod, I hate people like you. You don't smuggle because you need the money. You do it out of bravado, because you think it's smart to get away with something. Well, I wouldn't say that. You're worse than a real crook, because you can look at what you're doing objectively and know that it's wrong. You think it's a good joke, but it's not. It's bad. You look wonderful. You make me quite sick, Mr. McLeod. Jane! Miss Foster! Ah, dear. Drop a scotch, please, Elsie. It'll cost you two bob with the duty. Daylight robbery, that's what it is. 1940, and they say you get it for a tenner. Legitimate. I'd like to know what you could have got it for. Aye, aye. How's Miss Foster? Nicely, thanks. Between these four walls, I don't mind telling you something. She's been noticed. Noticed? By Miss Skipper. For when? What do we know him? Never you mind, I know his sort. And if Miss Foster takes my advice, she'll be very guarded. Yes, Dax? Half a bit of please, Miss. Anyone thinks she was the blooming Queen of Sheba, the way you talk? As far as I'm concerned, she is. Sevenpence, Dax. Ta. No need to get shirty. Dax. Now, listen here, young lefty. She's had a lot of trouble in her life, and she's come here to get a bit of peace and quiet. No, don't go on. My job is to see that she gets it, and the first thing I do is to warn away all the wolves. Good morning. Morning, ma'am. You're managing all right, Elsie? Yes, thanks. We've got a tenant. Oh? His name's Mr. Bromley. Very nice gentleman, he seems. Very clean-looking. Here he is. Morning. How do you do, Mr. Bromley? That's right, yes. I hope Elsie gave you a comfortable room. Yes, very comfortable, thank you. I'd like to inflict myself on you for about a fortnight, if that's all right. You're very welcome, Mr. Bromley. Thanks so much. Oh, have you any idea where Commander McLeod lives? Yes, I do. Yes, sir, it's easy. Go out of here, turn right, cut across the marshes till you come to the road and then follow your nose. Sure, thanks. It's called the Mill on the Hill. You can't miss it because it's on the hill. Oh. I'll be going along there myself in a couple of minutes. Do you want to want a lift? No, it's all right, thanks. I'll look him up tomorrow sometime. By the way, sir, you don't happen to be Lieutenant Bromley, do you, sir? I do, yes. You were the commander's number one on the snipe, weren't you, sir? <laughs> That's right, yes. Well, I was his servant during the war. Lefty Brown's my name. Oh. Glad to meet you, Lefty. Commander will be glad to see you, sir. He often talks about you. Oh, does he? Well, I'll see you again sometime, I well, don't, don't forget, sir. You're always welcome, sir. Had a nice time. Well, he's a good bloke. Skipper saved his life during the war. Did the skipper decorate himself for it? No, the old man's not like that. I got it from someone else. He don't like people talking about it. Give us another, Elsie. I've got a man working on it now, sir. Morning, Bromley. Hello, Willis. That's the latest gin. I've got a report here from the French authorities. Mm -hmm. It says that about a week ago, a small English yacht was seen lying off the Touquet. Supplies were taken off by French longshoremen. And the yacht took in several crates of liquor and sailed. The Frenchmen were arrested with 200 pounds of Navy Cut tobacco. Two-way smuggling. Well, that means that the French customs are anxious to cooperate. Yes. About four hours after the yacht left Le Touquet, she was challenged by one of our patrol boats off Rye. Got away in a fog. Any description of the yacht? Yes, she's about five tons. Petrol driven, small superstructure, painted light grey. Fair enough. Well, good hunting. Thank you. Morning, Perkins. Morning, sir. Evening, Elsie. Evening. Jen, please. Got him, Mr. Bromley staying here, I believe. That's right. He's not in at the moment, though. Miss Foster about? She's in her room. Ask her if she'll see me, will you? On a private matter. All right. It's the 
pirate. He wants to see you. What does he want? Well, he says it's a private matter. Shall I tell him you're busy? No, you'd better ask him in. All right, you can go in. The old place is beginning to take shape, isn't it? Well, Mr. McLeod, what can I do for you? May I make one small suggestion? There's a certain restful charm about Georgian chairs, isn't there? But they really ought to go in pairs, you know. <laughs> How's that? Delightful. Now that you've demonstrated your talent for window display, perhaps you'll be good enough to move it back again. Oh, don't you like it? I thought I'd made that point quite clear. Sorry. Very pleasant. I'm very busy. Would you mind telling me what you came to see me about? I came to ask you a favor. A legal one this time. I've got a model coming down tomorrow. I wondered if you could put her up for a few days. I suppose I can. I'm not really ready for guests yet, but... But you will. Can't you put her up? Oh, my dear Miss Foster. What would the neighbors say? Well, as long as your model doesn't expect too much. This isn't the Dorchester, you know. You smiled. You don't do it very often, do you? Not very often. Oh, you should do. The world's a very gloomy place. One should never miss an opportunity of brightening it up a little. Why did you come here? I'm very fond of the country. Good night. Good night. Gorgeous. Commander's compliments with Foster, fresh out of the garden. Whose garden? Come on, it's the course. Who's you think? I'm just wondering. Now, come on, get out of there. Go on. Flowers, six o'clock in the morning. What does he think this is? Covent Garden. Winchelsea! 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 to Margaret? She couldn't come. Why not? She got another job. Take the bags, will you, darling? Thank you, sir. Well, how do you think I look? You put on weight. I've lost pounds. You don't look very pleased to see me. We won't go into that. This is strictly business, Helen. Yes, darling, of course. And don't forget it. Have you done any good painting lately? You mean I've got to stay at some frowsy old inn? I do. But why? Because the neighbors... Oh, rubbish. You never used to bother your head about the neighbors. And I do now. Times have changed. I suppose the fact of the matter is you found yourself another girl. I'm too busy to bother about girls. Times have changed. There you are. Every convenience. Outdoors, no doubt. Personally, I think the place has great charm. It used to be a smuggler's headquarters. You know, I think I shall paint you sitting on a rustic bench, quaffing lemonade, with the inn as a background. I should call it, uh, simplicity. How's that? Corn. I must say, I was rather hurt to think that you'd ask for Margaret instead of me. Where are you, dear? Shop! It's the pirate. Who's that? That was Miss Tripp, the barmaid. What did she call you? The pirate. Suits me, doesn't it? Good morning. Good morning, Jane. This is Miss Lafayne. Miss Lafayne, Miss Foster. How do you do? I'm afraid your room isn't quite ready yet. Would you mind waiting in my sitting room for a few minutes? Thank you. What are we doing for lunch, darling? You can have lunch at the cottage, if you like. If it won't upset the neighbors, I'd love to. I'll pick you up in about an hour. Thank you for the flowers. Oh, not at all. 
Oh, by the way, do you do any sailing? No. Would you like to? No, thank you. No. Why not? I have a business to run. But when you're closed, you must relax sometime. I do. I read a lot. Perhaps you'll teach me. Perhaps. Would you like to see your room now? Thank you. I believe we've met before, haven't we? I don't think so. Your face is very familiar. It's a common face, perhaps. Oh, I wouldn't say common exactly. Elsie, will you show Miss Lafay into her room, please? Take her luggage. Yes, all right. This way, please. You've got a nice view of the sea. We haven't been here long. We haven't had time to do much. The bathroom's next door. Just a minute. Have you been with Miss Foster very long? Quite a while. Where did she come from? Why don't you ask Miss Foster? I'll ring if I want you. That is, if there's a bell in the place. There isn't. Morning. Morning. Nice bird. Hi. Does it belong to anyone around here? Aye. Wouldn't happen to be Commander McLeod's yacht, I suppose. Mm. <clears throat> what do you mean by dubious circumstances? Well, peculiar. I don't think I've met her, but I've seen a photograph somewhere. In a newspaper, probably. Nothing peculiar about that. Lots of people have their photographs in newspapers. Mm, not her sort, unless she's done something. What's a girl like that doing in a place like this all on her own? I don't think that's any of our business, is it? Besides, she's not alone. She's got Elsie. That's another thing. That girl's hiding something. Hiding what? I'd like to know. Oh, for goodness sake, Helen, stop acting. Just because Miss Foster doesn't take you into her confidence, you want to build a mystery around her. Let's go and see the new studio. I shall do some work while you're here. There you are. What do you think of it? Beautiful. Duncan. Yeah? Were you angry with me for coming down? Shaken, perhaps. Are you still shaken? No, yeah, I've got over it. I haven't. I said strictly business, Helen, remember? Oh, don't be pompous, darling. Now, listen, Helen. I went to a lot of trouble to get down here. As a matter of fact, I lied to you about Margaret. She told me you asked for her, and I persuaded her to let me take her place. We're not starting again, Helen. If you had any sense, you wouldn't want to. I haven't any where you're concerned. Now, do you want to stay and work or not? What do you think? What's the new masterpiece going to be? I'm going to paint you sitting on a rock with the sea as a background. Nude? No. You'll find a robe behind there and I want you to wear it. What are you going to call the picture? In a monastery garden? I think I shall call it the mermaid. Why not the quiet woman? Commander McLeod at home? Yes, he is. Won't you come in? Thanks. Uh, the name is Bromley. This way. Come on in, Dick. 
Left to tell me you're here. Good to see you. Seems yes. Well, it is yes. Good to see you, Duncan. Oh, this is Miss Lafayne, Dick Bromley. How, How do you do? do? Mr. Pour some drinks, will you, Helen? Yes. Sherry for you, Dick? Thanks. So this is where the great man works. I've seen a lot of your stuff in London. Recognize her? The snipe. I might have known you'd have one of her. You've got salt in your paintbrush as well as your blood, haven't you? Is she for sale? You can have her. I've been meaning to send her to you, but I lost your address. I see. Come and tell me all your news. Hmm? Hello, what's this? Oh, that's not finished yet. I've still got the background to do. I shouldn't think anyone to worry about background. That girl's face looks familiar. Shh. Confidentially, Helen's supplying the body, but the face is from memory. I don't breathe a word. I believe I've broken one of her union rules. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go and have that drink. You've named your boat after the snipe, haven't you? Hmm? Saucy snipe, isn't she yours? Oh, yes. I saw her down on the quay. Do you get out much? Not a lot. I'm rather busy these days. I hope Duncan hasn't been showing you the mermaid. Oh, that's well, a picture I'm painting. Helen's posing for it. Uh, oh, really? It's an unwritten law in our trade that no one sees a picture before the model. Well, quite right, too. Well, here's to the mermaid. Oh, thank you, Mr. Bromley. Won't you sit down? No, thanks. I mustn't stay long, though. I, I've got to write some letters when I get back. Tell me what you've been up to. Evening, sir. Can I have a word with you, Skipper? Won't it do later? Aunt Fanny's been took bad again. Oh, she's the daily help. Excuse me. Anything serious? Very serious. What's up? Sam was here just now. He said someone's been snooping around the snipe this afternoon. That's so. Sounded like Bromley the way he described the bloke. Oh, that's all right. Sam thinks he's a customs man. What gives him that idea? You know, our Sam. He says they smell like nothing else on earth. Really? I must get him to identify my particular odor sometime. Or I keep your mouth shut and your eyes open. Yes. Or if he is one. He's just drinking a large tot of duty-free sherry. Well, I hope it chokes him. Probably will if he finds out. Poor old girl. What's wrong with Aunt Fanny? Nothing much. How's your glass, Dick? No, I'm all right, thanks. I must be going. Oh, so soon? Mm. We've got to be up at crack of dawn. I thought you were on holiday. Yes, I am. I've arranged to meet some friends in Hastings. We're going off to do a spot of fishing. Well, this is certainly going to remind me of the morning watch. Oh, Duncan and I used to map out our future lives during watchkeeping hours. We tried to. Well, yours seems to be working out. I expect we shall see you in the headlines before long. Do you think so? I'll take a bet on it. Headlines are usually reserved for criminals. Oh, my dear chap, there's still room for artists. Well, I'm glad to have met you. Glad to have met you, Mr. Bromley. Uh, Lefty will drive you back to the inn. He's got to take Helen anyway. No, it's all right, thanks. I'm glad of the uh, exercise. You going to be here long? A couple of weeks. No, good. We'll see some more of you. I'll drop this in at the pub. Oh, thanks a lot. Cheer ho. Good night, Dick. Good night. Good night, Duncan. What a nice man. Typical sailor, isn't he? One can almost see him in his bell-bottom trousers, standing on the bridge, giving orders. He didn't wear any. He was an officer. Oh, sorry, darling. He did give orders, though. As a matter of fact, he was rather good at it. I wish I was. I think Left is getting the car, Helen. Mm -hmm. Anything? Do I look as though I've got cramps? No, you don't. Too bad. 
Can I interest you in a nice cup of coffee? You certainly can. Good Lord, my luck's changing. You all right? Yes. Come on, then. Up. Whoa, oh, wake up. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I'll get your towel. Yeah. Would it interest you to know I've decided to lead an honest life? You're giving up smuggling? For the time being. Why? For one thing, it's become a bit hazardous with old Bromley on the scene. I believe he's a customs officer. Is he? I thought you were giving it up to please me. Oh, I am. Killing two birds with one stone. Hello, who's that? You sure you left them here? Positive, I signed these. Well, look, my car's over there. I'll drive you back to my cottage and you can borrow one of my suits. All right? He can't have got very far. I'll get in touch with the police later on. Thank you. You'll look adorable in my suit. Think so? I know so. <laughs> How long's that Uncle Gorgeous is gonna be? Search me. I've been nothing but a blanket chauffeur since she arrived. What do you mean? Miss Larfane. Oh, Lefty, I've got to get away to things. I've got to buy a new hat. I've got to get some makeup. I'm much too tired to drive. Do you mind? Paralyzed, that's what she is. Lefty! I told her only yesterday, I said. Now, look here. I'm ready when you are. Yes, miss. Right away, miss. Car's waiting, miss. You don't get a newspaper delivery here, do you? No, not yet. You're missing something. There's an item of news in today's Express that would interest Miss Foster. There's a copy in my room, if you'd like to show it to her. Come in. Here we are, madam. Some of our latest Paris creations. I've decided on this one, thank you. And if you're quite satisfied with the cut, we can soon adjust the length. Allow me. Thank you. I must say, it's better than going into the quiet woman bar in a bathing costume. That depends on the angle you view the matter from, yours or the customer's. An old-fashioned. I realized that almost the moment I met you. You reminded me so much of my dear old grandma when she was 25. I don't think mine would have approved of a situation like this. I must go. Stay to lunch. Lunch isn't for hours. That's why I suggested it. I can't. I've got a lot of work to then do. Then come back later and stay to dinner. I'll fetch you. You wouldn't like me to take up permanent residence. I most certainly would. My dear Mr. McLeod, what would the neighbors say? There are no neighbors. My dear Miss Foster. Dear Mr. McLeod. Would you mind taking me back to the inn? Of course. Give me a moment to change and I'll be with you. I'll see you downstairs. What are you supposed to be? Principal boy? Somebody stole my clothes from the beach. Really? Mr. McLeod very kindly lent me this suit. Mr. McLeod? Oh, call him Duncan. I don't mind. Why should you? Miss Lafayne, why do you dislike me so much? I haven't any designs on Mr. McLeod, if that's what worries you. The only thing that worried me was recognizing your face and not being able to place it. That worried me a lot. It's all come back to me now. Stocksfield, a small town in Northumberland, about 12 months ago. I'm not going to do anything about it as long as you stay away from Duncan. He's inclined to be susceptible to pretty barmaids. I... Hello, Helen. Where's Jen? She's gone. Gone? Why? Don't ask me. I'm not a keeper. Did you quarrel with her? Why should I? 
I may have said something about her clothes. Of course, she's no sense of humor. She might have a guilty conscience. What about? Ask her, why don't you? Jane! What on earth's happened? What's Helen been saying to you? Nothing. Well, something must have happened. What was it? It's all right, Duncan. <laughs> surprised. You read the newspapers, didn't you? See who that is. It's all right, it's Elsie. Where can we talk? In there. There you're close. You seem to be enjoying it, so. Why did you take them? Something got into me, I expect. The irony of the situation, perhaps. You without a care in the world. Me watching. You can't stay, Jim. There's a customs officer living here. Get rid of me. I can't. He's booked for two weeks. There's a girl, too. She recognized me from Stocksfield. So what? If she tells the police, they'll come here to look for you. Who's the girl? She's an artist model. She models for Commander McLeod, the man you saw me with. You and McLeod seem pretty friendly. You know him long? No. He runs a boat, doesn't he? I've got to get across the channel. Fix it so he takes me. I can't. I can't do that. They won't get me this time. They will. You haven't a chance. You're going to help me. I helped you before, but they still call This you. is going to be different. I'm staying here till you get me away. If you don't, and I'm caught. I'll say you've been hiding me since I escaped. 
That's five days ago. From now on, you're an accessory. You'd better think about it. Well? I could go to the police. You could, but you won't. You wouldn't like them to know about us, would you? You'll have to stay in this room until I can think of somewhere else. There's an attic, but it's full of rubbish. I'll get it cleared. Elsie will have to know that you're here. See that she keeps her mouth shut. You might give me something to eat. I haven't had anything for two days. I'll get you something. It says here that Cranshaw was last seen in Dungeness. They think he might be hiding on the marshes. That's interesting. What's he supposed to have done? Oh, he's quite a versatile gentleman by all accounts. Deserter from the army. This is the second time he's broken jail. And it... Oh, Miss Foster. We're in the news. Did you know? Are we? It seems we have an escaped convict in the neighborhood. He broke out of Dartmoor a few days ago. Isn't it odd he should come all that way to the Romney Marshes? Yes, I suppose it is. I'm surprised that you haven't read about it. Oh, but of course you don't get a newspaper delivery here, do you? Borrow mine, won't you? It gives all the gory details. He was quite a character, apparently. Thank you. I speak to you for a moment, Jane. I'm afraid I'm busy at the moment. Is Elsie around tonight, ma'am? Yes, yeah, she'll be in the bar presently. Was it my imagination, or did you just get the cold shoulder? Some situations don't require any imagination, do they? Too subtle for me, Helen. So is Miss Foster at times. Not bad tonight, is it? Quite busy. Elsie, will you take over the bar for me, please? Yes, of course. Anything wrong? Lefty just came in. He, he's asking for you. Oh, he's always asking for something. What's the road, Duncan? No, thank you, Dick. I've got to get back. Night, Lefty. Good night, Skipper. Night, Dick. Night, Duncan. I'd like a seven o'clock call in the morning, Elsie, if you don't mind. It's all right, Go sir. On. You are having a strenuous holiday, aren't you, Mr. Bromley? I'm tired. Good night. I wonder how far that bloke's got now. You never know. Do you? He might be anywhere. You got indigestion or something? No, of course I haven't. That woman knows something. She doesn't know it's here. Well, she'd go to the police. She might go anyway. She knows what happened in Stocksfield. Oh, why don't you give him up? I can't. After him threatening you? <coughs> oh, I should say so. Elsie! Oh, shut up. You can't keep him here indefinitely. That's sticking out a mile. You know what I'd do? I'd swallow my pride and I'd go and speak to the pirate like he told you to. It isn't a question of pride. I bet he'd help you like a shot. I'm not going to ask Commander McLeod to involve himself in my troubles. That's fun. Elsie! Oh, all right. Blimey, what a thirst that man's got. Elsie! Come on, Elsie. You'll be hollering last orders any minute. They've hardly wet me whistle. Like serving drinks to a sponge. Last orders, please. Last orders. There you are. What did I tell you? This blooming club's always closing. What do you expect for one and tap? It's the Cafe de Paris. Last orders, ladies and gents, please. Well, the beer the market. Orders. Pub's closing at 10 o'clock. They ain't British. Work for the lover. Work. Put your shoulder to the wheel. Morning, Skipper. Hello, Lefty. You working this morning? No, I'm going to Dover to get some new brushes and paints. Better tell Miss Lefane I shan't be needing her. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, by the way, sir. What about the next job? Postpone until further notice. Better inform our friends on the other side. On account of Bromley? 
Partner? Partly. Aye, aye. Send them away, will you? Tell them on Fanny's ill. They'll understand. Ah, I see. And left, eh? <laughs> aye, aye. Elsie. Oh. Oh, I thought you'd, um... You it's... thought what? That I'd gone? I've been waiting for Lefty to pick me up for the last ten minutes. Have you seen him this morning? No, I haven't. Just a minute. As a matter of curiosity, has Miss Foster taken to having her breakfast in bed? No, I'm just taking this to, um... Yes, to, Elsie? To Mr. Bromley's a bit seedy. to talk to Jane. Where is she? She's out shopping. Anything I can do? Tell her I want to see her when she gets back. Why don't you get out of here while the going's good and leave her alone? Because the going isn't good. It's as good as it'll ever be if you ask me. I didn't ask you. Oh, well. Has she talked to McLeod yet? What about? You know what about. You're not as dumb as you look. I don't think she's seen him. You're lying. Where'd you get that? That's my business. <laughs> you look quite brave now. Would you like to see it work? No, thank you. If the wrong person ever comes through that door, it's going to work. Keep that in mind, will you? Better leave the key with me. Don't forget to tell Jane I want to see her. I thought it was understood I was to be picked up in a car every morning. Skipper said he don't need you today. Oh. Well, I think he might have told me himself. Where's he gone? Dover. Going to get some new paintbrushes. Mr. Bromley's waiting to see the skipper. Mr. Bromley? He's inside. Elsie told me you weren't well this morning. Really? She must have been thinking of someone else. I imagine she was. It's not much use waiting for Duncan any longer, I suppose. You've no idea what time he'll be back, have you? Mr. Bromley, hmm? you're an old friend of Duncan's, aren't you? That's right, yes. Lefty tells me he saved your life once. Yes, he did. Then I imagine you'd do him a favor if you could, wouldn't you? What is it? Duncan's making a fool of himself over this Foster girl. You mean Jane Foster? Yes. Oh, why do you say he's making a fool of himself? She seems a very nice girl. Excuse me, miss. Is Commander McLeod at home? No, he isn't. Then can I have a word with you, miss? You may. I called to see the commander about a report he made the other day. A young lady lost her clothes while she was bathing. I believe so. He mentioned seeing a man on the beach, a stranger. Oh, yes. It looks as though we might be someone we're looking for, a man named Cranshaw. We've reason to believe he may be in the vicinity. I read about it in the papers. I'm just warning people to be on the lookout. Do you mind telling the commander for me? Of course, the chap who took the young lady's clothes may be just a crank, but we've got to be on the safe side. Good day, miss. I'll tell the commander, Sergeant. Good day. Thank you, miss. Cranshaw escaped from prison once before. He was caught in a place called Stocksfield. Were you there? Yes. So was Miss Foster. Cranshaw was found in the house she was living in. Well, there was nothing proved against her, but she was strongly suspected of sheltering him. I see. 
What do you suppose Cranshaw is to Miss Foster? Her boyfriend, I should imagine. Well, why didn't you tell the sergeant? Because I think Duncan should know. I think he should be warned. Preferably by someone like yourself, someone dependable. Why aren't you dependable? Are you afraid of being thought prejudiced? No, love affairs are things I've always tried to avoid, Miss Lafayne, especially other people's. I'd much rather you tell Duncan that Cranshaw's Miss Foster's boyfriend. He's less likely to punch you on the nose. I think you're being rather selfish, Mr. Bromley. Yes, I suppose I am. I'm a bachelor. Tell Duncan I called when he gets back. Nothing important. Lefty? Come on, straight up. What's going on? What you raving about? Cranshaw. I don't know what you're talking about. You're a nice girl, Elsie, but you're a rotten liar. Now, let's have it. Where is he and who's hiding him? Mind your own business. I want to know what you two girls are letting the skipper in for. The commander doesn't even know that Cranshaw... Fair enough. Where is he? Come on, you can trust me. Where are you hiding him? In the attic. The commander doesn't know anything about it, and Miss Foster doesn't want him to, so you keep your big mouth shut. Well, what's she hiding him for? It's none of your business. I don't mess about it. I'm trying to help you. Has he got some kind of an hold over her? Yes, and he's been trying to persuade her to ask the commander to get him across the channel. Of course, a channel? She won't hear of it, so don't you go accusing her of letting people in for anything. All right, keep your hair on. Where's Miss Foster now? In her room. She in all day? She'll be going into town this afternoon to do her ordering. Why? I'm going across to her eye. Be back later. It's Jane. They're searching the marshes for you, Jim. If you go tonight, you might stand a chance. For God's sake, where do you think I can go? It's up to you. You choose your own way. You've got to help me, Jane. Keep your voice down. If you'll only talk to this fellow, McLeod, you'll be shot of me one way or the other. I promise you. You've promised me a lot of things. I mean it this time. If he takes me, I'll never come back. If he doesn't, I... I'll go anyway. Give me a break, Jane. How many breaks have you given me? I didn't mean to treat you badly. I, I wanted you to have things. Things I couldn't buy you. That's how it all started. Don't you see? I, I used to think I was doing something for you. I, I wasn't always thinking of myself. You're making up for lost time, aren't you? It's true, Jane. Take your hand, look at me. I don't want to go back. You can save me if you want to. It's in your power to save me, Jane. Jane! I've done all I can for you, Jim. Say that you stole from me. That you're lying. You never thought of anyone but yourself in your whole life. Jane, I... When you came here a few days ago, you were very brave. Do you know why? Because you thought you were dealing with the other Jane. The one you bullied and despised when you were in the money. The one you cringed to when you felt you were losing the whip hand. Now you've lost it for good, Jim. I've changed. I've got something to live for. I'm going to fight to get it. And you're not going to stop me this time. I'll give you all the money I've got if you promise to leave. It's about 50 pounds. That's no good to me. I've got to get over to the other side. I'll buy your way across. You want me to get caught, don't you? Don't you? Well, I'm not going. You're going to tell them? No. I don't believe you. If I call out, Bromley will be here in two seconds. Better let me go, Jim.
So you're back at last. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Didn't they have to give you my message this morning? He did, but I've been waiting to see you. I'm going back to London, Duncan. Oh, that's all right. What train are you going to catch? Is that all you have to say to me? Pretty well. When you get to London, you might ask Margaret to come down, will you? I suppose it's a matter of complete indifference to you whether I stay or not. Well, since you put it that way, Helen, I suppose it is. Oh, dear, you treat me like a bit of cast-off clothing. Oh, for heaven's sake, I told you I didn't want to start anything. You've done nothing but ignore and humiliate me from the moment I arrived, and I know who I've got to thank for it. Well, I think it's time you learned the truth about your sweet, quiet woman. You'll be interested to know that she's liable to be arrested very shortly for harboring a criminal. What are you talking about? You didn't know she had an escaped convict for a boyfriend, did you? Well, for your information, she is now hiding Mr. Cranshaw at the inn. I knew the moment I set eyes on her, she was nothing more than a cheap slut. If you've quite finished, I'll drive you to the station. It's a train in about half an hour. Don't worry. Find my own way. What time was this handed in? About half an hour ago, sir. What do you make of that? Aunt Fanny, much better, will make crossing today, arrive 22.30 hours, Uncle Edward. It's funny, what have I... Where did this come from? It arrived at Rye Post Office this afternoon. Any idea who handed it in? No, but it's addressed to Monsieur Albert Vino of 14 Rue de Maupassant, Le Touquet. The French authorities have got him under observation for smuggling. Well, it's code, isn't it? Exactly. Anyway, the French will inform us if our man makes contact with Vino. If he does, We'll nab him on his way back. If this is the same yacht the patrol tried to stop, it'll take about four and a half hours to do the crossing. Well, you'd get better get to Rye Harbor about six. OK. Watch out for anything sailing. OK. Jane! Jane. Don't run away. Glad you came. I couldn't talk to you the other night. That's OK. I know why you couldn't talk. And then tell me about Cranshaw. Who is he, Jane? If she told you, there's nothing for me to say. Except that... I wanted you to know the truth. Cranshaw's my husband. We were married during the war. I'm afraid it's one of those things you spend a long time regretting. How long has he been at the inn? Nearly a week. You've got to get him out, Jane. He won't leave. And go to the police. No. If you don't, somebody else will. It's only a matter of time. Listen, Jane. If he was worth any consideration, he wouldn't have come here. I'm not trying to make excuses for him. Are you afraid of betraying him? I am. What's he doing to you? It doesn't matter what he's doing. It's what I'm doing to him. I'd have to live with for the rest of my life. Let me help you, Jane. There's nothing you can do. I could get him out of the country. I can take him now. If you were caught, he'd only drag us with him. That's what he'd like. But, Jane... Sooner or later, he'd be caught. But not through me. Do you love him? I did once. That was a long time ago. Since then, I've betrayed him a thousand times in my own mind. I've grown to hate him. I wish that he'd die in prison. Or get killed trying to escape. I've betrayed him that much, Duncan. Now he's hunted and very frightened. If they find him here, I'll just have to take the consequences. Some way, though, I hope they do find him. Try and understand, Duncan. Skipper! What is it? Just a minute. Sorry to trouble you, miss. Someone called at the station this afternoon with some information about that man we're looking for. The person said he was hiding here at the inn. Do you mind if I have a look round? It's for your own protection, miss. I'd like to start with the attic, if you don't mind. All right.
in all the rooms, miss. This is my room. You better take a look at the boat, Lefty. I'm just off, Skipper. I'll put yours truly inside. You took rather a lot on yourself, didn't you? You're always telling me to use my initiative. It was mine you were using. That doesn't matter. The result that counts. Might as well make yourself comfortable. Do you want a drink? No, thanks. How long do we wait here? Not long. Tide will be on the turn in about half an hour. Left is getting a boat ready. I suppose I ought to thank you. Forget it. I'm not kidding myself. You're doing it for me. As a matter of fact, I knew nothing about it until Lefty got you out of the inn. You've got him to thank. Didn't Jane ask you? Why should she? Because I told her to. If you've got any ideas about Jane, you might remember she's still my wife, will you? You don't know her very well, do you, Crenshaw? You apparently do. Now listen, I've decided to put you down on the other side. I'm doing it for your wife's sake because I think she'll be better off without you. Meanwhile, if you've got nothing pleasant to say, you better keep your mouth shut. That suits me. Good. I'm going upstairs to change. Better put these on. And keep away from the windows. Sorry to have troubled you, miss. That's all right. We have to check up on these things, you know. Of course, nine cases out of ten, they don't have to be false alarms. Curious mentality some people have. Are you quite satisfied? Oh, yes, miss. There's no sign of him here. Why don't you try Commander McLeod's cottage, Sergeant? What's that, miss? I've just seen Cranshaw making his way across the marshes. Commander McLeod was with him. Do you know Cranshaw by sight, miss? No. Then how did you come to recognize him? That would take rather long to explain, Sergeant. Let's call it an association of ideas, shall we? I suppose one hiding place is as good as another, as long as you're not found in it. That sounds a bit unlikely to me, miss. But I'll investigate. Poor Duncan. The things a man will do for a woman. I think it was rather kind of me not to mention Lefty, don't you? He was with them as well, you know. Have you seen Duncan? Yes, he was here a few minutes ago. Elsie, what happened? Lefty must have sneaked Jim out while my back was turned. Then... They may be trying to get Cranshaw out of the country. Is that your idea? No, but... Is Duncan on the telephone at the cottage? Yes. Do you know his number? Yes, I do. We'll ring him through and warn him the police are on the way. But they may have gone straight to the key. All right, I'll get down there. Duncan must be out of his mind if he thinks he can get away with this. Number, please. Winchelsea, 2481, please. Vacant. I'm off to the key, Elsie. You won't get there before Bromley. I might. Get below, Crenshaw. What about me, Skipper? Who's there, Shaw? But Skipper. That's an order. Aye, aye, sir. Has Duncan taken Crenshaw aboard? Oh, what's the matter, sir? Has he got him aboard? Oh, yes, sir. Well, if we don't get Crenshaw off, Duncan's for it. Come on.
outside, Lefty. Aye, Duncan. Next time you go out, you want to make sure who's traveling with you. What are you talking about? The stowaway on board, didn't you remember? A stowaway? You know who he was. Left is bringing the body back in the snipe. If you take my advice, you'll leave identification to the authorities. As far as I'm concerned, he was a stowaway, forcing you across the channel at the point of a gun. But Dick, if Listen, I... Duncan. It'll be better like this. Better for Jane. Don't you agree? Thanks, Dick. <laughs> 